I want to call this um, the rational rapture because I want to, to take a look at the concept of the rapture from a rational standpoint. I think that's probably the most useful. Um, I know that there are passages in the Bible that can be and have been construed to mean that we will be taken up into the air, physically removed from this world and join our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ in heaven at a certain moment. Um, but I also know that there are, are many interpretations of, of, of those verses. And the verse in particular in, um, I think, is it in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4, is one of the most, I think scholars concur, that it's one of the most difficult passages of the New Testament and there's never been complete concordance among scholars as to its meaning. That's worth thinking about. But whatever it is, and you know, if its meaning is quite literal and, and you know, the rapturists, as it were, are right, we don't know when it would happen. I mean, it's an imponderable. And to waste our lives on the imponderable is to waste them. We can't imagine being taken up into the air at a certain moment. The whole thing is beyond our reason and understanding and therefore it's, it isn't worthy of our attention. It's in, it's in hands far greater than ours, as are all these imponderable matters. It's almost conceited to attempt to um, unravel them. But another thing, of course, that could be borne in mind is that it's not, you know, it's not actually a mainstream Christian teaching, the idea of the rapture. It was a marginal idea in the olden days. A few kind of crazy or you know, out there sects had developed these certain interpretations. They were very much minor views of that, and that they were then um, taken up by certain um, clergymen in the 1800s. Or perhaps in the, in the late 1700s. And somehow they became the mainstream throughout the entire Protestant church in, a, in, in short order. Um, they took a hold um, primarily from um, Derby, I believe. He was the, he's credited as being one of the main people who produced the doctrine of the rapture. And, uh, you know, the ex-Plymouth Brethren Church that I used to frequent, they clearly believed in the rapture and spoke of it often as being something that might happen during the week. But you see, the likelihood of anything like that happening during your life is so small that it just isn't worth considering and living your life on the basis of that. If you're a Christian, of course, you know, you, you know that you will be reunited with Jesus Christ at some point. That's, we have that assurance. We are given that assurance. But we don't know really when and, you know, whether it will happen at the moment of our death or whether there will be some meeting beforehand. I mean, these things are imponderable. They're unfathomable. They're questions that can't be answered uh, by, from a rational standpoint. So that's why I would say the rational rapture is just not to worry about it and not to consider it. Um, the very strong likelihood is that you will live the full length of your years and you will die in your grave as a man dies in his grave. That's the very strong likelihood based on 
you know, an analysis of history ever since it has existed, with the exception perhaps of um, Elijah, recorded in the Bible, and of course Jesus Christ assumed it. I don't remember whether anybody else did. There might have been one or two, but I don't think so. Angels would come up and down, of course. Um, I'm not saying that those things are not possible, because in the practice of sorcery, uh, it becomes clear at a certain point that certain levels of awareness and understanding can be achieved that will enable um, a seer, a man of knowledge, to uh, become the vision that, that is implanted in the mind of the onlookers as it were, to actually mould reality and therefore to fly into the air. And this is a moment of great spiritual elevation and is certainly an approach literally also to heaven. So a very serious matter. But the interface between earth and heaven is in the hand of the Lord. It is not in our hand to have knowledge of these things. We were banished from the garden and we are, we remain banished for the time being. God bless.